Let the drums roll out. Let the trumpet call. While the people shout, strike up the band. Hear the cymbals ring, calling one and all to the martial swing. Strike up the band. There is work to be done, to be done. There's a race to be won, to be won. Come, you son of a son of a gun, take your stand. Hi there, I'm Dan McMahon, Director of Marketing for Goodspeed, and I miss Goodspeed Show so, so much, just like you, I saw the comment. Um, but we're here with great speed, it gives us a chance to look back at some of the shows um, until we can do them again on our stage. Um, and what we just saw was uh, the song Strike Up the Bam, one of the Gershwin's great hits, performed by Tony Asbeck in our production of My One and Only. Um, you know, for those of you who watch regularly, you might um, notice that Donalyn Hilton is not here. She usually runs the show for us and is our, our, our hostess. Um, she's taking some really well-deserved time off. Um, so it's me and um, special guest coming from the dark side is Michael Flynn. Michael? Hello, great speed audience. And I say the dark side because Michael runs this show. So he's back behind the scenes with all of his computers. So now he's going to do both. Be with us on camera and run it. You know, I got hired for my looks and they kept me for my brains, Dan. <laughs> so here we are. We'll see if I can do both at the same time. <laughs> um, but we are so happy that you all are here joining us today. Um, uh, I. Before we get started, we wanted to offer a heartfelt thank you to all of our members. You really are the lifeblood of Goodspeed, and we can't do what we do without you. Um, so we're so happy you're joining us tonight and that you continue um, to give and help, and we really are so grateful for all of that, especially over the past few months. Uh, it's crazy times, and so many of you have donated tickets and made contributions to the Footlights Fund, and we are sincerely, sincerely grateful, so thank you. We are. We do this for you, and thank you. And, you know, if you have comments tonight, some of you have already seen it on the right side of your screen, um, you can type them in there, or you can text them to 860-638-7157. You see the number crawling right down below. I got the phone right here. It's right here, guys. Hotline's <laughs> <laughs> <to> Michael Flay. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get started. So we're looking at what my one and only tonight. And Music and lyrics are by George and Ira, the great George and Ira Gershwin, um, book by Peter Stone and Timothy S. Mayer. Um, our production was directed by Ray Roderick, uh, choreographed by Kelly Barkley, both of whom have, did, have done numerous shows for us. Uh, Michael O'Flaherty was the music director, set design James Humans, costume design Robin L. McGee, lighting design Paul Miller, projection design, and we'll get to this later, Michael Clark, um, sound by uh, our own Jay Hilton, and heroin designed by Robert Charles Valance, um, and orchestrations by Dan DeLay. So together with our amazing production team, we created this incredible production that we're so proud of, and it was a real audience pleaser. It really was. <clears throat> I, I watched it. I mean, I was not around good speed at the time, but I watched it the other night, and it is so full of, like, great gems, incredible dancing from the entire company. You guys heard... Tony Asbeck just there sing the crap out of that song sounding amazing. So it's a really special production. And uh, tonight we're pleased to be joined by the director who created that production, Ray Roderick, also our 42nd Street Singing in the Rain, uh, Maine and many others, and one of its most memorable performers, uh, Aldi Lewis. So let's welcome them now. Hi, Ray and Aldi. Hey, Aldi. Hi. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Great to see everybody. <laughs> Great to see you. Hey, where are you guys? Where where are you where are you coming in from? Well, I'm down at the Jersey Shore, uh, uh -huh. trying to. My wife and I, Karen, 
uh, who did a, did a few shows of good speeches and oh, yeah. uh, wonderful actor and to the bikinis uh, <laughs> just celebrates the Jersey Shore. That's where I am right now. Oh, that's great. And what, what have you been working on while you've been in quarantine? <laughs> well, I got a couple of projects that I'm working on now. One is um, I'm doing a, I'm writing a new musical based on um, the life of Emily Roebling and uh, the building of the Brooklyn Bridge. It's a becoming a more and more well-known story, but it's a little known story that if it weren't for a woman, there would be no Brooklyn Bridge. So, um, and it's been a, pet, a project of passion for me. Um, and then I'm also doing a collaboration with um, a music producer and a pop artist in Japan. We've written a song together and we're uh, getting ready to do videos of that, so. Wow, That's two awesome. very different things, cool. <laughs> very different, yes. Aldi, what about you, where are you? Well, <clears throat> I'm in Houston. Uh, <clears throat> I moved uh, to Houston from Flint, Michigan actually because my daughter, she was determined that I would come to Houston to relocate after they poisoned the water in Flint. And so she uh, said, you have to come here and that the art scene here uh, was, uh, was welcoming. So uh, that's how I ended up in Houston. Um, and what it is that I'm doing specifically now is I've written a couple of scripts, uh, one specifically called We Too, uh, which is pretty much a biographical piece of me uh, being in New York, um, doing film in Broadway, and then uh, having my daughter born during the time that I was uh, actually doing uh, the film, The Cotton Club. Um, and then uh, from there, it, it, it really speaks on the, the different things that I did as a performer uh, in New York. And, but primarily, the story is the uh, single father uh, raising um, uh, a daughter and the trials and tribulations that they bring and the joys that they bring. And so it's really, uh, again, a bi biographical story on um, not just uh, what I was doing, but the, the, the impact that a person has on their child um, from putting forth the, the right amount of effort and concern. Wow, you know, the child. Both, all of these shows. And the word on the street is that it's pretty good. So. <laughs> 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 Uh, oh, in you fact, know, as much as I could fact, it, talk with you guys all night, the people okay. who are watching are here to hear from us, yes, but really to see the video. So I think we should get started with the first clip. Um, you know, this show was one of those with a thin plot that really showcased the, the music and the dancing. And, you know, it's boy meets girl. He was the famous ace flyer. She was the... the, the the celebrity swimmer and turned movie star and her managers trying to break the two of them up and you know craziness ensues. But let's take <laughs> one of the another one of those Gershwin hits. Life has just begun. Jack has found his Jill. Don't know what you've done, but I'm all a thrill. How can words express your divine appeal? You can never guess. All the love I feel From now on, lady, I insist For me, no other girls exist It's wonderful, it's marvelous You should care
wonderful is that it's wonderful um <laughs> it's it's <laughs> why they call it that um shout out to uh gabriel uh, Rui, uh ruiz right oh, right. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, who played edith and uh, you may recognize from crazy ex-girlfriend where she is the new girlfriend uh if i'm not mistaken uh but ray first question to you why this show what's so special about my one and only why were you so drawn to it well, you know, to be honest, I inherited it. It was somebody else's project and they got busy. And so good, I did a few shows for Good Speed that were singing and dancing, you know, and Kelly and I'd worked together a ton. And um, Kelly Barkley, who choreography, by the way, is I think it's some of the best I've ever had on a stage. And thank God for, uh, there's no, she's, she's just, when it comes to tap dance choreography or any choreography that matter, she always just nails it. And she did it with this show. Um, I was in Crazy for You, so I got a connection with Gershwin from way back, and um, they said, hey, when the other director wasn't available, they said, hey, would you take a look at this? And uh, I really kind of inherited it. And I thought, wow, um, you know, not expecting to do it. Um, I, you know, it was, you know, it was challenging because it was done in 84, and it was one concept that made sense in 1984, but we really had to take a look at it and say, hey, there's another way to do this. And uh, that's what we did. The great, uh, by, the way, by the way, great design team. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, we, have, we have questions about that. <laughs> Don't we, Dan? <laughs> oh, we sure do. <laughs> um, but there's obviously so much great dancing in the show, like you just mentioned. Um, and there's so many. It's, it was hard for us to go through and pick uh, just, just yeah. a few to showcase because they're all so... Like after we got through the clips at the end of our rehearsal today, I was like, oh wait, but we didn't get to do that one. Like there's I so know, we wish it's, we could show everyone the whole show again. We're not able to, but we it's like it's just jam it's just jam-packed with one great number yeah. after another. And so my first experience with my one only was I think in previews on Broadway, I I went I did standing room because I was, you know, new to New York and we're all trying to save money. And I saw it from the back of the house. I think it was the St. James. Am I right, Aldi? Yes, it was the St. James Theater. St. James, one of my favorite theaters. Um, and Aldi was in it, you know, and I remember him. He was in the ensemble in 84. And he, but every show he ever did, and I saw, I think I saw every show he did on Broadway, he was featured in a standout. And you could not take your eyes off of him because they would always feature him. And, um, but it was it was it was mind blowing. It was just so fun, I got to tell you. And um, so it was like, you know, what are we going to do at Good Speed on our little stage, of course? But beyond that, what are we going to do special? And um, I think you know, we, we found our ways. <laughs> I think so. So let's look at one of these uh, one of these phenomenal dances. Yeah, let's see some of their talent. <laughs>
Oh, I'm exhausted already <laughs> from watching. <that. laughs> nice. Ray, you know, I mean, Kelly did an amazing job, and I'm I'm a big fan. And I, you know, you said you two work together a lot. Like I, you had to collaborate a lot on this one, though, didn't you? Because I mean, the way the story's told is not like stop and go. It's through the whole thing. Well, you know, I decided to pick a vocabulary that was something that uh, Goodspeed hadn't done. And um, because it was about a film star from in the 20s and uh, this, you know, local, this, you know, flying ace from uh, Texas, you know, let's make a musical. Uh, but because it was a film genre, I said, let's see if we can, I wanted to nod to those old mechanical film tricks of that era, you know, the 20s, you know, if you think about what Buster Keaton did with the camera and the tricks he played on the audience, like, wow, you know, but he did it all mechanically. So it was of a certain style. Same thing with Fred Astaire, you know, part of that number, if you, if you keep going, and maybe you will at some point, it's a nod to that Fred Astaire number where he's basically dancing with himself multiple times in many places. So that's kind of what we did with Tony. And we had to plan this all out in advance choreographically. And we did a lot with green screen and we had Tony dancing in front of a green screen. So, and Kelly had to choreograph clearly a duet with Tony and himself and we had to lock it in musically. And you know, Michael O'Flaherty had to have a little thing in his ear going, it's gotta be this exact same tempo every night. So there was a <laughs> lot of math to do coming in the door of the theater. And you know what? I gotta tell you, everybody played so well together and really big hats off to you know Jim Humans and um, Michael Clark, because I, I can't tell you how much everybody had to collaborate for that to line up. Oh yeah. But that was the fun of it, you know? I mean, and especially considering this was like early days when projection and all these things were kind of being like finally really like coalescing in theater. So it's definitely- You know, I get, you gotta say, you know, this, yeah, they had never done this before. They never had a projector in the theater, to be honest. I and thought it, this was the first time. Yeah, they'd never had a projector. And they, you know, they were a little skeptical about it. But I got to say, you know, I said, I think this is the vocabulary we want to be in visually for the show. And there's so many fun things we can do and solve that they had to do like in 84. You know, they're, they're flying planes in and stuff. We can't do that. So we had our solutions for that. It was all theatrical projection tricks in a way. But, so, you know, I got to say... They were skeptical a little bit at first, but then they were all in. And I give Michael Price some credit for that. He goes, we're not going to rent a projector. We're going to buy it. I think that's what he said. We're, if we're doing this, we're doing it. <laughs> I believe that. I, I just was like, okay, here we go. You know, yeah. but that was good speed. And God bless him because, you know, we created something in a way that it had never been done before. You know, this right. should have been done a lot, but it's never been done like this. And we were very proud of it. And it was awfully fun for everybody. I mean, look at those dancers and what Kelly did with those dancers. You know, it was such a beautiful collaboration and a joyous collaboration across yeah. the board. So Aldi, talk about like going from being in the ensemble of the original Broadway show to then a completely reconceived version of that at Goodspeed, going from the St. James, which is huge, to Goodspeed, which is small. What was that like for you being like in the, knowing the ensemble stuff from 1984, but then doing a completely different role in this production? Well, uh, because it was 1984, and, and I think we did this, what, in, uh, what? Uh, 2011. 2011. Was that yeah. 2011? Yes. Okay. Um, I had forgotten all the choreography. Uh, though in my mind I could see, uh, you know, visions of the the uh, directions of the movement, but not the choreography itself. So, th just the fact that the way that they approached uh, everything was so different, it was refreshing. Uh, it was as, as if it was a, a totally different and new show to me. So I approached it in that manner. Uh, I enjoyed um, what we had done before. But I really also really enjoyed what they brought to the table on this particular version. So uh, that's pretty much, you know, but in terms of the rest of the production, uh, well, I guess we'll get into uh, certain things later on. But for right now, that's pretty much what I'll say on that. Good. Yeah, that's great. And we talked about, I mean, Ray, you provided the perfect transition to our next clip in talking about the projections and all these things. Um, but we're going to take a look, a look at a short clip that really highlights how creative, um, how creatively you all use projectors in the show.
I will never forget those women faces in the bubbles. That just, I just loved that when I first saw it. Very Busby Berkeley. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of Busby Berkeley, like, you know, these big production numbers, obviously, that he's so famous for, is that part of what inspired kind of the unit set that then could then have all these things projected on it. And you, we go from location to location. You're basically so, a big, it's a big sound stage. Yeah. The whole thing's a big sound stage. You remember the, in the old days, they project the, you know, you could be driving a car and they'd be projecting the scenery behind as if they're driving and their hair's not blowing or anything. But you know, it really is that vocabulary. It's that simple, you nailed it. It's Busby Berkeley and all those guys who, let's make something out of nothing. And I, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, you go. You go, Dan. You go. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really anxious to see this. <laughs> Aldi, the, uh, Aldi, the next clip um, showcases you, your brilliant dancing. Um, but you weren't always a tap dancer, were you? I, I, I believe the great Honey Coles had something to do with this. Uh, actually, he did. Um, when I came to New York, I came to New York with the idea of becoming a modern dancer. And so I was... Um, uh, taking classes and preparing for that. Um, but I was staying with a, a family of a family, my relative's family uh, that lived in New York. And it was there that one of them didn't know exactly what it meant to say that you were here to be a professional dancer. And he said, well, have you ever gone to the Apollo? Have you heard of the Apollo? And if you think you can dance, like you say that you're here for, uh, they have a competition there, and they'll probably boo you off the stage. <laughs> and, so I, and so as a dare, so as a dare, I decided to go up there and see if I could get on the, uh, on the stage uh, for Wednesday night. So I did. I went up there, and the, the guy looked at me, and normally it usually take two weeks to do certain things, and then they'll call you, and all, you know, just a whole uh, protocol behind getting on the stage. And, but evidently, I must have stated myself in a certain way that he looked at me and said, he said, so what do you do? And he's a stage hand. He said, so what do you do? I said, well, I dance. He said, you dance? Uh, what kind of dance? I said, well, any kind of dance, any kind of dance. He said, I'll tell you what, if you think you can really dance, then come back here next Wednesday, be here by six o'clock and I'll get you on. So I did. I, I um, I performed it uh, for the uh, amateur night at the Apollo, and uh, and I ended up winning that evening the show. And this guy who I did not know, uh, uh, he was the host, and he came up to me and gave me this great big hug, as if he was my father. And he said, "You know, if you could tap with what you already have naturally." there'll be nothing that could stop you. And the reason why he said that was because he said, I hear things. He could tell in the way that the syncopation of my body movement that allowed him to know I was hearing things in my ear that other people weren't able to uh, normally hear. And he said, if I could take what I'm hearing and put it into my feet, that there'll be nothing in the world that could stop me. That person was Charles Honey Coles. Now, Again, I didn't know who he was, and so I just took it with a you know grain of salt. I had won the Apollo, and that's all I was interested in. So I go home, um, I go home, and I'm telling them how everything went. And then there's a place I was taking classes called Clark Center. And while at Clark Center, I would bring up that I had won the Apollo, amateur at the Apollo, and they said, and I said, you know, and then, you know there was this guy. There was this older guy that said, um, see, his name was uh, Honey. I think he said Honey. And he looked at me and went, Honey? Yeah, he said, Honey, Honey Coles. Honey Coles? I said, yeah, this guy named Honey said that, and, they, and I got that about four or five times, the way exactly that way. At that time, there was you know, no cell phones. And I said to myself, okay, if I'm getting this kind of response about this guy every time I bring up his name, I need to go to the library. So I went to the library and looked up this guy and sure enough, I found out who he was in terms of being one of the greatest tap dancers that ever lived. And it was then that I decided I would get back in contact with him. <laughs> and 
the fact that he had given me his number. He said, if you ever decide that this is something you might want to do, then get in contact with me. So All I got right, in got contact with him. We've got to see some tap dancing. I'll, I'll, okay. All come right. on. An amazing, story. An amazing story. And this clip just proves the genius. So, okay. That was one of the great moments on the Good Speed stage. So much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Aldi, how much fun did you have doing that? I think I think we ran a lot of weeks. So you must have done it eighty-eight <laughs> times. Enjoy and enjoyed every minute of it, especially since uh, Honey being my mentor and the role that I was playing was the role that he received the Tony Award for, and for me to re. Um, 
uh, revamp the role uh, was a pleasure. And I felt very honored to be able to do the role that my mentor originated on Broadway. And you know, watching that clip, it felt to me like one of those clips from the Tonys. You know, it just looked like that kind of thing. <laughs> that yeah. would have been the, that would have, it should have been the Tony number, right? For sure. Yeah, right, exactly. I mean, it's exactly. astounding. The level of talent between the, it's astounding. It is astounding. Yeah. Like, I be interesting. More than major mentor proud, more than. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that uh, the slides and I, things that I did uh, in that number, um, the, I actually did those same slides during the Tony Awards. I remember part of right, but it was that was when I was in the um, the ensemble, and so it was interesting that at least we were able to uh, create that moment uh, from oh, the Tony cool. Awards. Yeah, because that, that was one of your signatures. I remember you in the ensemble of shows, and you know they always feature the dancers, and and if they had a specialty like that, he could do things nobody else could do, and yeah, you knew. You you waited for him to do that if you if he was in the ensemble. That so Ray, how did you cast Aldi? Did you go looking for him or did he just come walking in? You know, I gotta tell you something. He came in from Detroit. And I couldn't wow. frigging believe it. I was <laughs> sitting behind the table. I couldn't believe he came in to audition from Detroit. I couldn't believe it. And that, yeah, that was all all I needed to see is him in the room. So we're done. I, I had I had been away from New York for twenty four years at that point. Wow. And I received a, a call from someone, uh, an, uh, the casting people, and they said that someone said that they knew where I was wow. and that if I would be willing to come to New York to audition for the role that they knew that Honey uh, was uh, my mentor. So they said, would you please come to New York to audition for the show? Please, please, please. And I said, Sure, sure. Wow. And and at that point, I hadn't performed in twenty four years. So um, when I got you there, I just that? did my thing. <laughs> you serious. did that after twenty four years. Oh, you're twenty four. I had. Well, don't you. wait twenty four more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I gotta say, I gotta say a little something. You know about Aldi. You know, there are a lot of dancers in the world. But we chatted about this a little bit earlier. And, you know, there's a difference between doing the steps clearly and someone who it's, they own it and it's, it, they're expressing themselves. And it's like it's never happened before when they dance. It's like this has ne it's never happened before and it will never happen again. It's so in the moment. And uh, it's a rare thing. And uh, we were so, that's why he stopped the show with Tony. But, Every night, every night, he stopped the show. Yeah, um, I know. and it's undeniable. Yeah. such a gift, and such a gift for good speed to, for him to be able to have him in the show. Oh, my God. And I truly enjoyed it. And it, and from that point on, I I I, I never left theater again. <laughs> oh. So I, I continued doing things, but I didn't go on a hiatus. <laughs> like I did a twenty-four then. year hiatus, right? right. right. Yeah, well, that was just real quickly. What had happened was I had come home to visit one day, and my mother was sick, which I didn't know that she was. And I made a decision that I was not um, going back to New York. I needed to be home, and I stayed home to take care of my mother. Uh, then eventually, uh, my daughter came to live with me, and then I ended up raising her from the age of ten um, until she went off to college. So. My mind was elsewhere, believe me. Yeah. It was nowhere close to uh, talking about dance or theater. It was about taking care of business. And so that's what happened here. Well, life takes over. God bless you for that. Oh, yeah. And, and we're glad you're back, Aldi. Yeah. And you grow from it. You grow from it. I hope you'll both be back to good speed soon. I hope we'll all be back to good speed soon. <laughs> well, I think that would be wonderful. I think that would be wonderful. <laughs> well, on that note, it's time for us to wrap things up. We try to keep it to 40 minutes and we've got one more clip. Um, but thank okay. you all for so everyone stick around. Oh, we got one more clip um, to send this out on. Um, but we will be back with great speed on August 11th to celebrate our production of Brigadoon. Uh, and so that should be very special. And Dan, you want to tell the people out there what we're doing? This week on In the Home well, Office. And so Thursday, Donlin is back and with another episode of In the Home Office. 
she'll be speaking with Gilbert Bailey, who's an up and coming musical theater writer who um, has been part of our Mercer Colony in the past. And I think you'll find really interesting. So uh, that's Thursday night, seven o'clock, go to goodspeed.org and you can register uh, and enjoy it. And so before we go to the last clip, Ray, thank you so much. Aldi, thank you so much. It's so good to see you both. And I do have, a, I want to shout out to Babs from the box office, who I saw in the chat is here. <laughs> Many of the people watching know Babs, so, and we miss her a lot. We hope to see you soon, Babs. But Ray and Aldi, thanks for, um, for being here. And let's take a look at Kicking the Clowns Away. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much.